In this special episode, we head to the middle of the South Pacific to Rarotonga in the Cook Islands. Our first couple of days are spent beneath the ocean scuba diving in some of the most pristine reefs in the region. Miranda completes her advanced diving certificate and we explore an abundance of marine life in this tropical paradise. We explore a shipwreck from a century ago that has since been claimed by the reef. And hijack my brother and his wife's honeymoon, turning it into a family vacation with their daughter and our parents in attendance. We snorkel the lagoon located right outside our resort, spotting large schools of fish. I also take out a kayak to explore the lagoon, which tragically goes wrong. Taking to the mountains, we hike across the island through tropical rainforest, climbing high rocky boulders and spotting magnificent bird life. Check out a cultural village with dinner and show to further understand the Polynesian history of the island. Join us in paradise in the Cook Islands. Alrighty, we've gone back in time today to the Cook Islands. We've jumped over the date line. And we're here at the Rarotongan Beach Resort. Look at this room. This is a beachfront room. So we'll be spending the next week here and we've got my dad, my stepmom, my brother and his wife and their little baby, Alaska. They'll be coming here on Saturday. My brother and his wife don't know that we're here. So when they turn up on Saturday, it's gonna be a little bit of a surprise and it's gonna be a bit of a family vacation. It's actually a delayed honeymoon of theirs from two years ago. And now that they got a little one, it's a bit more of a family affair. What's the plan today? So I'm starting the first day of my advanced open water diver course and Shane's coming along for the ride. Some scuba today. Yeah, we're here in Rarotonga with Dive Rarotonga. We're going to do some uh, scuba diving. As part of Miranda's advanced scuba diving certification through PADI, she had to undertake a series of tests. Between exploring and interacting with marine life, she had to practice then show her ability to control buoyancy and safely navigate through tight spaces, among other things. Practice makes perfect. Prior to arriving in the Cook Islands, I completed an online theory course and test, which reduced a five-day paddy course to only three days whilst in the Cook Islands to maximize our time exploring the wonders of the underwater world. PADI is the most internationally recognized diving certification organization with instructors all over the world. As a scuba diver for over eight years, I would encourage anyone with no underlying health issues, confident swimming ability, and a thirst for adventure and exploration to give it a try. There's a whole world of wonder waiting beneath the water.
Not only was Rarotonga one of the most affordable places globally for scuba certification, but Dive Rarotonga, the company I went through, were thoroughly professional with great instructors and equipment. I would highly recommend them if considering certification or just some leisure dives for certified divers visiting Rarotonga. second day beneath the waves. As Miranda was in the latter stages of her course, we were able to dive beyond the limited 18 metre depth for open water beginners. Advanced certification allows divers to dive up to 30 metres or 100 feet. For me, this was a leisurely fun dive with the opportunity to interact with the tropical marine life of the reef, including a resident green sea turtle you may have spotted on our previous day's dive. Diving gives us a sense of freedom. Being weightless in an open world filled with unique natural structures to explore, along with interesting alien creatures to uncover and interact with. It reinforces to us why coral reefs are so important as a haven for healthy fish stocks and marine populations. Also a reminder how fragile these ecosystems are to human behaviours that can upset the perfect pH balance these ecosystems require. Processes such as acidification can come from chemical waste or carbon dioxide dissolving into the ocean due to it being produced faster than nature can absorb it. Caring for the planet also involves caring for our hidden world beneath the waves. It's always important to research dive companies before traveling to understand their ecological impact on the ecosystem they work with and whether or not they help sustain and educate others about the importance and fragility of these places. Dive Rarotonga is a PADI eco-center. This rating is granted to PADI dive centers that demonstrate a dedication to the core values of conservation and dive industry sustainability. So it was a pretty spectacular dive there. We saw a massive moray eel is out on his hunt. We can see him full body out there and also that uh, green sea turtle we saw yesterday. We're about to go into the Mai Tai right now, which is an old ship that wrecked in 1916. It was built in Newcastle, England, and it used to do the mail run between the USA and New Zealand and Australia. And it crashed out here in 1916. Third time it run aground, actually. So I'm going to go check that out. This is my second ever wreck dive, and already I'm in love with exploring these places. The surreal shapes are fun to imagine their human construction and function. There is something profound about seeing these elements reclaimed by nature in a way that is beneficial to the environment.
morning, we were preparing to surprise Shane's brother Dean, his wife Grace, and their daughter Alaska as they had arrived for their honeymoon. Shane had composed a song on his ukulele to welcome them upon their arrival. The following morning, we were preparing to surprise Shane's brother Dean, his wife Grace, and their daughter Alaska as they had arrived for their honeymoon. Shane had composed a song on his ukulele to welcome them upon their arrival. They were joined on their flight by my dad Gary and stepmom Kathy. What do you got? Well, no, no, what? <laughs> when the fish is ready, then you're gonna come out. Perfect. Yeah, Excellent. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, the reef and beef. Uh, beautiful. What do you got there, big fella? We're sharing that, counting myself. Nice. And you got the fish sandwich. Uh, Humpback whales could be seen performing their signature tail slaps as we relaxed into paradise. Yeah. Nothing is too good for me. It's nice and cold. Oh, hey! Can I do a dance? I think dance. <laughs> So the food here looks delicious and these night markets are open every Sunday here in Rarotonga. Yum. So I'm just going to go through some of the options that we have here. We've got the lamb umu, which is kind of like an underground fire pit similar to the Maori hungi that we have in New Zealand. So this is um, lamb and spinach cooked in that, slow cooked. Absolutely delicious and it's really soft and tender. 
And um, I'm not sure the name of this one, but it's like a banana and taro mixture. It's kind of soft and sweet, but it's really nice. We've got the pork sticky ribs here, teriyaki chicken. And this one's a local specialty. This is the ikamata. I think it's called the ikamata, is that the name of it? Yeah. And it's, it's basically like a uh, seafood or a fish kind of like a Polynesian style of ceviche, if you could describe it similar to that. It's raw fish that's cooked in lime juice and then um, they've basically added some coconut milk to it. So it's all delicious. It's really, really good food. Yeah. Oh, I know, we saw the ribs. Gary loves the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the uh, ladies a couple of bottles of uh, Moe at um, uh, Auckland Airport. So we're gonna open one bottle tonight for uh, Gracie and uh, Kathy. Miranda doesn't drink, so she'll be bringing water. <laughs> Wait, Miranda. I will. I'll be bringing my water with me. And she'll live to 110. Beautiful. <laughs> where Kathy and myself got married and um, I was just saying to the boys that if you look over the hill there Kathy walked down the hill and then around to the left here we had a Polynesian band there was uh, uh, about uh, 30 of them playing and uh, yeah they came down we had a uh, celebrant she had no shoes on she was barefooted and we did our vows just here on the beach and uh, the band played for about an hour and a half until we ran out of alcohol and everybody left and we went back to the, the cabins we had one of these cabins here and uh, we had uh, about eight of our best friends here. It was really good. Alrighty, so we've just picked up a people mover and we're doing a, a lap around Rarotonga. Gaz is going to be our tour guide. He was here how many years ago, Gaz? Uh, 26 odd years ago. Can't even tell the exact time. Alright. Resort and Lagoonarium. This is the Lagoonarium right here. So it's a lagoon that extends all the way around Rarotonga. Uh, a couple of guys out here just saw some sea turtles. So we're gonna go out there and see if we can spot them as well. Do a little snorkeling. Within minutes, we were astounded by the abundance of fish in the Lagoonarium. Soon, we came across a large school of striped large-eyed brimfish that we couldn't help but immerse ourselves among.
Fascinated by the diversity of marine life, in the distance we kept an eye on a large blue red-toothed triggerfish. Probably the best meal and atmosphere we had in Rarotonga was at the Tamarind House restaurant. Hello, Lassie. Hello. Where are we, Miranda? The Tamarind House restaurant. In Rarotonga. In Rarotonga. Oh, and this was made, um, voted, what was it, on TripAdvisor? One of the top ones, isn't it? One of the top ones. Really good. So this is Dad's meal right here. Isn't that gas? Huh? It's your meal there. This is my meal here, mate. There's none for you, Kathy. <laughs> no, no, nothing left in the ocean. Yeah. How's the food, everyone? Good? Yeah, awesome. Yeah? Awesome. Delicious. Right. The best yeah. restaurant on the island. Really good, thanks for asking. Well done, Marina. What do you got there? Thanks. Salmon. Nice. Mum, mate. Prawn cocktail. Oh, yeah. oh, you got the uh, fish and island fries? Are they taro chips? Yeah. And I got a turmeric coconut chicken. So I'm out kayaking here on the Araroa Lagoon in Rarotonga at the Rarotongan Beach Resort and Lagoonarium. So yeah, check out some of the area and maybe I'll spot some turtles, jump in. So the wind's been pretty tough so far. It's taken me about 10 minutes to ride here. Finally on the other side of the resort. Gonna make our way down, hopefully to the point, somewhere near there. halfway to the point now. So up there you can actually see the needle, which is where Miranda and I are hiking to tomorrow. I'm gonna hike from the other side of the island, back over this way via the needle. tough against the wind there. You see behind me here a bunch of ATV guys covered in mud and they're just trying to rinse up all that mud in the ocean there. It's kind of crazy. So I'm gonna head past these guys now and pretty much break my way out to the uh, the edge of the reef where it's pretty much a high tide at the moment so uh, it should be good to glide over there and actually go with the wind on the way back. <laughs> Achievement. How far I've come. I can't even see it down there. See around the point here, beautiful beaches. This is all part of the, the lagoon, so the lagoon pretty much stretches around the whole island. Alright, time to just go with the flow. You see the waves out here just breaking on the edge of the reef. And that's uh, what protects the lagoon, that's what creates this still body of water here, this pool that surrounds the island. Just one big giant reef that kind of circumferences the whole of Rarotonga. something was wrong when the kayak was struggling in the rougher waters. It wasn't long before the kayak filled with water and began to sink. In the deeper water and at such a large distance from the shore, things became very concerning. Well that was scary. Basically I noticed 
as I was pedaling along the back of the kayak was sinking. Apparently the kayak is somehow filled up with water on the inside. And the back was sinking, I was trying to balance and I fell in a couple of times, trying to get back up, row again. But uh, even still, even if I was moving towards the front, I couldn't keep the balance and uh, kept falling in. So I had to strap everything to the kayak. Put on my, my snorkel gear. And basically, try to swim to the shallower parts and then walk across the rocks wherever I could. Trying really hard not to step on any coral and or urchins or stonefish. Oh my god, I'm so out of breath. I felt like I was drowning at certain points. That was scary, now I've got a long journey back. This kayak is so heavy right now, I can't even move it. I can't even drag it on the sand, it's that heavy. Holy shit, I don't know how I got it through the water. It was really scary too, everything was like floating off in every direction. I had to go catch it and tie it to the boat, but let's see what I can do right now. So you can see this. This is absolutely cool. Water. So I'm guessing there's supposed to be some sort of plug. I don't know, but that's side on and it's still pouring out. It was surprising how much water this thing filled up with. I couldn't even move it before. And it took about five minutes of just pouring out. I haven't got a plug, but I'm going to use this. Pretty much paddle along the coastline here just in case anything else happens and hopefully make it back there very shortly. We're heading out on a bit of an adventure today, right, Chicky? Yeah. Doing the Cross Island Track and heading up to the Needle. So that's going to be uh, the highest point of the trail, looking down to the other side of the island, which is where we're staying. So we're literally, literally crossing from one side of the island to the other. Going to go for a bit of an adventure through this native forest. Just entered the forest and it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> Got a couple of goats in the background winning there. We've also heard some of the native birds as well, which is quite unique because if you walk around most of Rarotonga, at least with the more populated areas, you can only really see the Indian minor birds, which were introduced in 1916, and they actually cause a lot of problems for the native bird populations. As we entered as well, there was a memorial to Pa, who was actually the guide that took my dad and stepmom on this trail back 26 years ago, so it's pretty cool. Oh, look at this. I've got nothing to eat. I've got nothing to eat, little one. That's going to join us. Following. ascent was quite sudden and steep, navigating around and using large tree roots as steps. Uh, this is something we randomly didn't expect was roosters at the top of the needle.
spectacular views, we could see the red-tailed tropics birds soaring high above the rainforest canopy on our way to the top. Made it to the top. Woo. Woo! Yeah, so we've just had to climb up a whole bunch of ropes and chains. We've got these amazing views around us here. Absolutely stunning. Damn. Didn't quite realize that we had to get up ropes and chains to get up here, but hey, it was uh, definitely worth the view. And if you're afraid of heights, you might want to stay away from that part. Yeah. Navigating our way through the forested gorge, on our descent we spotted a dog randomly roaming the rainforest trail. So we've been winding down through this nice little gorge, sculpted by beautiful rainwater that's come from the mountains. Following this river, we're about almost three quarters of the way through the trip now. So it's been lovely, this last little section through the forest here. All right, Chicky, what did we just see? We saw a Rarotongan flycatcher, which is apparently rare, so that's a win for us because we just wanted to see any other bird besides a miner and a chicken. So we just took this little side track up a, a steep hill. A nice little lookout up here. You can actually see in the distance there, the lagoon and the reef. It's pretty cool. Alrighty, so we've reached the end of the trail at Wigmore's Waterfall and now we're just walking along the dirt track until we at least have some service. Hopefully someone will be prepared to pick us up. If not, we're walking back to the resort on the main road which will take roughly about 40 odd minutes. So you can see behind us here the ruins of the old Shangri-La resort ran into some problems about 20 or 30 years ago due to the owner's involvement with the mafia. Uh, they are redoing it up now and hopefully it'll be a beautiful beachfront resort in the coming years. Kia ora guys. Hey, mate. Where are we? We are at Highland Paradise and we're doing Island Night. Oh, 
that's it. Where's Dean and Grace? Yes. Yeah, they're out having a lovely romantic dinner with Lassie. Yeah, hey. So we're gonna chill out here, have some dinner, and watch a performance. to the actual Murai. So this was established in the 1980s after almost a hundred years of the people not living up in the mountains due to the missionaries calling them down into the coastline. That's the Murai. The Murai is a place where our ancestors used to worship. They also had meetings on the Murai. But I just wanted to bring your attention to this tree over here. This is what we call a hi'i. Our ancestors used the chestnut as boundary markers. Once the land is conquered through war, the land is then settled. But before the final settlement of the land, the king would call a special meeting up on the mountain with all his rangatira, all his mataiapu. These are his generals, and he would reward them. Last Tinomana that left these mountains in the 1800s. His name was Tinomana in Warurutini. He had four wives. He had children from three of these wives, no children from the fourth wife. My name is Tanya, I'm the son of Enua, who was the son of Tere, who was the son of Emma, who was the daughter of Napa. Napa was the son of Tawi, who was the son of Wakirangi. Wakirangi was the first wife of Tinomana Enua Rurutini, the same King Tinomana that left these mountains in the 1800s. After Tinomana became a Christian, he had to choose one wife out of those four. He chose Tepuri Apa, the woman he kidnapped from the neighboring tribe of Takitumu in the south. Why he chose Tepuri Apa over my grandmother ancestor, Wakirangi, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe she was younger and prettier. But after he married her, she then became the first and only wife in the new Christian era. But the original first wife was my grandmother ancestor, Wakirangi, because it was her father, Tangia Adepai, that conquered all this land through war. The name of this marae, Mongaroa Kitai Dobungotera. There are seven other marais on these mountains, but still overgrown with trees and bush. This is the only one that Raymond cleared in the 1970s. There were people living up here as far back as around about 300 AD, around about that period. So we did not put these rocks together when we heard that you were coming. <laughs> Been there for some time. These two trees, they grew on the marae after our people <coughs> left the mountains. But there were up here, no trees, no houses, all open. Houses for living on that side and also that side. All open on the marae. So we're about to have a traditional meal and uh, it's done buffet style, but a lot of the meat stuff up there is all done through the umu, which is like an underground fire pit, very similar to what we have in New Zealand known as the hungi. So looking forward to trying some of those things there and also the taro leaves as well. The absolute highlight of the evening were the island dance and music performances. Tales of history and culture interwoven throughout the event transported us to a time before European contact.
This is the end. Good trip. All done, mate. All done. Check the box. Time to move on. It's hard to say farewell to a beautiful place like Rarotonga, but even harder to say goodbye to family. We returned back to catch the end of New Zealand winter with plenty of big adventures to come at home in the land of the long white cloud and abroad. Join us for some amazing adventures coming up with Global Travel Stories. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. And we'd love if you could leave us a comment, letting us know what you've enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. And help us grow our channel, become part of the Global Travel Stories family by sharing with friends, family, or anyone you think would enjoy our content. Thanks, guys.